Randa Nautica was first made available to download in February of 2020. In essence, the app encourages its users to explore the world around them by randomly generating a set of coordinates for them to travel to. You're supposed to have a purpose in mind when using Randa Nautica, whether you intend to find treasure or simply reflect on life. Since its release, Randa Nautica has been downloaded over 1 million times. Its success has been aided by the COVID-19 pandemic, as people have enjoyed using their socially distanced time outdoors to visit a location generated by the app. As you might expect, some people have been led to some pretty questionable locations by Randa Nautica. But a discovery made by a group of teenagers in Seattle is surely the most disturbing so far. It's quite common for randonauts, as they're known within the community, to share exploration videos on TikTok. On the 20th of June, a user named Er Henry posted a video to the platform which shows a group of teenagers happening across a black suitcase on some rocks by the sea. The video had been recorded the previous day. At first, the group jokingly suggests that the suitcase might contain money, and it's clear that everyone is in good spirits. However, as the suitcase is opened and a foul smell permeates the air, it becomes apparent that something isn't right. The police are called, and it's later confirmed that the suitcase contained human remains. Other bags containing body parts had been found in the surrounding area. A local TV station reports that the remains belonged to 35-year-old mother of four, Jessica Lewis, and her boyfriend, 27-year-old Austin Wenner. It was determined that both victims had been killed by gunshot wounds on the 16th of June. The couple had been together for eight years. Randa Nautica has spoken out, calling the discovery an unfortunate coincidence, and reassuring users that the app's coordinates are truly randomised. At the start of the video, I mentioned that randonauts should travel with a purpose in mind. Apart from this, they are also required to physically set an intention. Simply put, they need to tell the app what they would like to encounter on their trip. According to one user on the randonauts subreddit, the group of teenagers who found the suitcase had set their intention as travel. It's unclear whether or not this is true, and it's quite possible that the comment was meant to be a joke. Regardless, it isn't the only comment to question the coincidental nature of the app. Another user said, I wonder if this will make police look into the app more. I've seen a lot of people on TikTok saying that they think this could be an app that criminals use to either kidnap people who go there, or stuff like this. Stuff like this, of course, refers to the suitcase. Other randonauts have documented their experiences too. One girl's coordinates led her and her best friend to a person walking through a field, alone, in the middle of the night. However, not everybody believes Randonautica is creating a deliberately unsettling or dangerous environment for its users, as is evident in this comment. Lamau, if you were randonauting back when there was no app and you had to message a telegram bot for numbers, you would get to know the developers because they were super open and talkative in the discussion channel. This probably wasn't even the first coordinate that was generated during their session. I'm familiar with the ideas involved and it's not that kind of spooky. It's magical and kinda occult, but not horror movie material. I was confused about it for a long time and did a deep dive. The nature of this user's deep dive is unclear, but I suppose it's irrelevant. What I find quite unusual about this case is that the police didn't actually respond to the group's report until a few hours had passed. It took a lot of persistence on the group's part to get the police to come and investigate the suitcase. You'd think that reports of a foul-smelling suitcase filled with black bin bags would be enough cause for immediate action to be taken, but apparently not. At the time of making this video, a $10,000 reward is being offered to anyone who helps bring the perpetrator to justice. This reward money was raised via a GoFundMe campaign, which was started by Jessica Lewis's aunt. In terms of possible leads, there doesn't appear to be an awful lot to go off, but some comments on the West Seattle blog caught my attention. Two nights before the remains were discovered, just after 1am, somebody was having boat troubles by Anchor Park. A rescue response was set up, but the boater was strangely uncooperative and seemed to be acting suspiciously. People seemed to believe that given the proximity of the boating incident to where the remains were eventually found, and the boater's odd behaviour, it's possible the boater may have dumped the remains. Of course, it's important to remember that this is purely speculation. 
Hopefully, new information will come to light which will help the police with their investigation. I think the nature in which the remains were found makes this case even more chilling. Jessica Lewis's aunt has said that Jessica and Austin were a fun-loving couple. They were just nice, normal people. Nobody deserves what happened to them. If you think you may have some information regarding Jessica Lewis and Austin Wenner, here is the number you should call. I hope the victims' families will obtain the closure they deserve. This is my first video and I know that I still have a long way to go in terms of production quality but I really hope you enjoyed it anyway. This channel will be focusing on true crime and unsettling or unexplained events and if you have any suggestions as to what I should talk about next, don't hesitate to leave me a comment. Stay safe and have a lovely day.